I think from a historical perspective, I would say environmental sanitation is very important. That's when you get the, you know, clean water supply, refuse disposal, sewage treatment, and the food hygiene. That's, that's the first thing. The other one would be access to antibiotics. I think uh, that's something that we cannot take for granted. And thirdly, uh, implementation of our immunization program. A very systematic coverage of the population and also the ability to make sure that every child and uh, exposed person is also uh, vaccinated. I think we have to accept that it's a small size of the population, the country, a very compact and educated uh, population, and uh, also a very proactive uh, public health uh, program that will ensure that the control measures are well implemented. Because I'm actually in cancer epidemiology, I was not directly involved in uh, SARS uh, control and uh, investigation. But I was at that time a uh, master of a hall of residence. And so I was actively involved in uh, you know, uh, surveillance, temperature checking, monitoring. And uh, it turned out that there was one case of fever you know, that we had in the hall you know, of uh, 500 students. And so it was a very trying time to make sure that this a uh, boy was uh, properly investigated and isolated and all the measures uh, that were required during that time. So that was my very direct personal experience. Yeah. I mean, we were all uh, you know, traumatized by this uh, epidemic and I think uh, certainly I would say that uh, there's always a sense of fear. But at the same time, you make sure that all the precautions, the measures are taken and uh, make sure that the people are well masked and uh, proper isolation uh, techniques are in place and hygiene, personal hygiene and all that. So in a way, you make sure that all the right things are being done. I think all public health action must be evidence-based. And because it's evidence-based, we have to make sure that research findings are well uh, evaluated and then uh, going on to translation of those ideas and those uh, knowledge into practical measures. So I think that's something that we must continue to work on, evidence and research. I think basically we need, I would say, you know, systems in place to ensure good surveillance and investigation outbreak. Next, we, we need to have a system in place for risk assessment, risk management and risk communication. And thirdly, I think it's very important to have the national or an international network for infectious disease control. So I think uh, if we have those place, pieces in place, hopefully it will uh, lead to a better ID control. Um, I would say, you know, airborne infections, I think it's very important, of course, related to that will be uh, widespread air travel. Secondly, will be zoonosis uh, because of the very close proximity between humans and animals. And of course, we can see all, all sorts of uh, zoonosis taking place like SARS, MERS and so on. And thirdly, I would say bioterrorism. And uh, that's an area that we have more or less kind of uh, put into the background. But I think the threat of bioterrorism is very real. I think it's always to have that high index of suspicion. You know, sometimes, uh, especially for the medical practitioners, we kind of tend to think, oh, it's not so important, just a fever or just, a, you know, some rashes. But I think having a high index of suspicion is the one that will lead us to suspect that something may be happening. And once you think that something may be happening, that's when you start doing all the investigations and notifying the disease. I think that's important. I think the, I would say the most important thing to do is to reinstate ID control as an important public health, I would say, you know, agenda. Uh, I think we were lulled into complacency uh, to think that, well, infectious diseases are no more important and they're all under control and so we kind of put them into the background. But uh, with SARS and now with many of these uh, infections, we realized that Emerging and re-emerging infections will continue to be very important. And so the surveillance and all the measures in place for disease control. And thirdly, I think risk communication becomes very important.